You're watching Hot Walk Academy. My name is Ming Jin Tong. Today, we're making luopo kao or turnip cake. Let's cook. All right, this is, uh, I know I say everything's a favorite, maybe I just love food, but this one really is a treat for our family. When we make this or when we go out for dim sum, our family always enjoys this dish a lot. So um, quick overview of the ingredients. You're gonna wanna get yourself one nice daikon radish. Um, sometimes they can get a little bit old and the outside skin really gets tough. So pick one that looks young and tender. Um, this, I really like this one. So get a good daikon radish for yourself. Our aromatics today is just going to be green onions. Very, very simple. I've got these uh, cut up already. And of course you'll want salt and uh, salt and water. And then for our rice flour, this is gonna be the agent that actually makes the turnip into a cake form through steaming. You'll wanna use rice flour and not this product, the glutinous rice flour. This is made from a short grain sweet rice that will become very sticky. And this is a long grain regular rice. Get the rice flour for this recipe. And here's what we're gonna do. It's actually quite simple. So first I just wanna remove that end just cause it's a little bit, uh, a little bit tough, a little bit harder to grate. From here, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and just peel this. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the grater to turn uh, this daikon basically into mush. Uh, and then we're gonna cook that up. So I'm gonna just get this all peeled up here. I'm just using a regular Y peeler. I think Y peelers are superior to the stick peeler because of the uh, technique of holding it and being able to make a nice peel uh, right at the end especially just kind of flicking your wrist uh, in this way. After you've got your daikon fully peeled, what you want to do is you want to take your grater. Now, you have the option of a box grater. Here I have a ginger grater, which actually works quite well on daikon as well. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grate that daikon. And what we want to do is create a lot of the pulp. We're going to do roughly half the daikon into pulp. And then the other half we're going to do um, in the in the grater on the on this fat side. So let's, let's let me go ahead and show you what we're going for. If you don't have a grater like this, um, don't worry. You can use um, you can use a box grater and just do the the shreds, uh, or you can get a grater. Um, this is a Kyocera ceramic grater, fantastic grater uh, for ginger root and of course for daikon here. And this is what you want here. You want this kind of a pulp. Um, to turn your daikon uh, into this pulp. And this is what you're gonna be cooking with at, at the end here. So let me go ahead and get this grated. And I'll do, I'll do a lot more here. And before I keep going, just for the sake of showing you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the other uh, kind of grate that we want. So after you have about half of your daikon grated on this kind of a grater, you're gonna to wanna to go through, and this grater obviously is a lot more familiar to everyone, and this kind of a grater just produces, of course, the shredded daikon. So this is the other half of what you want. So what I'm going for is I want a mix of um, daikon that is like more like a pulp and daikon that is more in these shreds. So get that all done. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera so you don't have to wash the whole thing. Okay, after what seemed like 20 years, I got all the daikon graded. And you know what, to be honest, the, um, the small grater, it just took so long. So most of this is the shredded daikon. It's going to be just fine. If you have the same experience at home, do that as well. Um, even a food processor might be helpful to you. After you get your daikon grated, the next step is you're gonna wanna add some salt. Now, this salt, some of it will come back out. So what you wanna do is you wanna do an even coating, and you can be a little bit heavy here. You don't, you don't wanna make it overly salty, but the salt, in this case, is not a seasoning. What we're gonna be doing is using the salt as a tool. It's a tool that's gonna break down 
and bust open the cell walls of the daikon. When that happens, the liquid comes out and we actually want that because we're gonna be stir frying this. You don't want a lot of liquid. What we're doing is we are concentrating the flavor of the daikon by drying it out with salt. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and let's mix that around and I wanna get all that salt to be dissolved into my daikon and I'm gonna let it sit for just a minute and what I want to do is I want to squeeze all the water out of my daikon. So here we go. I'm mixing it and I can already tell it's actually already quite liquid. I mean, look at how much liquid there is coming out of there already um, because daikon is just a very, naturally very uh, liquid or very juicy, I guess you could say, root vegetable. So let's get that mixed around a little bit more. I want an even distribution of my salt. Uh, across all my daikon and I am gonna throw that water uh, out. I'm not gonna use that at all, okay? So let's go ahead and get that mixed. Normally, if I were doing this off camera, just at home, um, I would let it sit for probably 10, maybe even 20 minutes um, to really let it do its work. But for the sake of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it out and we can, uh, we can use it for our stir fry. So one pan is dry. This pan is wet. This is where my salt is. Let's give it a really good squeeze. So look at all this liquid coming out of here. If you have any cuts on your hand, you'll know because this is going to hurt uh, that salty water there. Okay. Now you got, look at this. It's just completely dry. Uh, this is the, this is the stuff that we're going to be using here. So a little bit more. If you want to use uh, like a pastry bag to squeeze it out, that's okay as well. I don't think it's gonna work so well in a colander. You'll have too many small pieces of daikon that will be falling out. All right, one more handful here. Very dry. And let's get this last little bit. All right, and here is all the water that was extracted. I'm gonna to try to catch as much of that daikon as I can yet. Okay, now that we've got our daikon ready, now keep in mind, you did add salt. So if you were to eat a bit of this, which is fine to eat raw, you can taste, you might want to take a, a little sample to understand how salty is my raw ingredient so that later when you go to add salt, you're not over salting it. Always taste what you're cooking. It's always very helpful. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the cooking portion. So I've got here a portable butane range. That's just because I want to show you here in this space, I can make the whole thing here. You can use your stovetop. You don't need one of these special ranges at all. Let's go ahead and get that lit. This is canola oil. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some canola oil, probably about that much. You don't really want a lot. You just want the oil to help lubricate the food in the pan. We're not doing a stir fry. We're using a wok, but we're using it just to cook the ingredients. Okay. So I'll let my pan heat just a little bit. I'm going to throw some scallions in. Then I'll throw in my daikon and I'm going to let that cook. In the meantime, while that's happening, let's go ahead and we'll use, how about we'll use the same pan here. And in this pan, we're going to go ahead and make up our uh, rice flour as well as water. So let me go ahead and get this going. Let's get some scallions in there. At this stage, what we're going to do is just kind of let this go. I'm going to turn my fire down just a little bit. There's no need to have it on high heat. And I'm going to go ahead and add a pinch of salt to my scallions. At this point, I don't want to fry my scallions until they're wilted or brown or anything. I'm just flavoring my oil. And I actually want my scallions to have a, a little bit of texture when they're actually in the cake. So pretty early on, about now, I'm going to go ahead and add in um, all of the 
daikon, okay? So here's the daikon's gonna go in. Oh, it just smells amazing, actually. It smells so good already. All right, let's give that a toss. Just get that incorporated. Get that broken up a little bit as well. I'll do a little bit more salt. And let's break that daikon apart. Now, it looks a little bit dry, which is totally fine. Where This is not an oily dish at all. I may add just a little bit if I sense that my daikon uh, is not able to move around enough. Again, using oil as a lubricant, not necessarily to make it oily. I will add just a little bit to that. My goal here is to actually par cook my daikon. So the goal is to help the daikon begin to take on the flavor of the scallion and the salt through the medium of the oil and to cook that daikon so that the steaming has less work to do, okay? And remember, there is still some water content because we didn't squeeze all the water out, right? There's a little bit left. Uh, it's, the, the daikon looks a little bit moist. This is what it should look like at this stage. What you want is for it to start to par cook and before you add your rice, your rice flour in. Sensing that it's a little bit dry, I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. Smells amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the time and I wanna taste a little bit. What am I tasting for? I wanna taste for the texture of the daikon. Has it begun to soften up? And I wanna taste for salt levels because at this point, I'm not gonna be adding any more salt um, into the dish. So I gotta taste it now to see how it's doing. Let's try a little bit. Ooh, tastes amazing. <laughs> Delicious. It's definitely uh, salty enough. It's definitely begun to cook. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my flame off. This is what my finished product looks like before I add my uh, rice flour and starch. So let's go ahead and we'll kind of leave it here in the pan. For your rice flour, now just based on experience, um, I kind of know I'm gonna use about one third of this bag for that much daikon. One daikon, about two pounds or so, and I'm gonna use about a third of a bag. Now, if you put too much rice flour, you're gonna have a dense rice cake, no good. If you put too little, when you steam it, it's never actually going to turn into a cake. So um, you could experiment a little bit. Um, even if you follow a recipe, you gotta be really careful um, about how much rice flour you put. So, it's gonna take you a couple rounds to kind of really figure it out. Don't be discouraged, go ahead and try it. Again, about one third of a bag here. All right, that's how much rice flour I've got. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to that. Maybe two pinches. And I'm gonna add some water. Now the water is going to be the element that helps all of this stick together, okay? So let's go ahead and add the water here. I'm just gonna mix it by hand. What I want is a pretty runny, thick slurry. Now, you, you don't want it too watery because it's going to, um, it's go that water is gonna remain in your cake. So you want it to be a pretty thick mixture here. Let me get the lumps out and show you. If you watched the fried chicken that we did, I talked about the slurry being like a high quality paint. This is gonna be just a little bit runnier than that. You don't want it to be too thick, okay? But this is the, the texture that you're going for. From here, let's go ahead and add our 
Daikon in. And actually, I do sense it's a little bit runny. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more rice flour to thicken it up. I don't want it to be too thick, but I definitely don't want it to be too thin. Let's get that incorporated one more time and see how we're doing. All right. That's pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. From here, let's take our daikon and we'll add it all in to the slurry. And then let's mix it all together. We can just do it by hand. It is a little bit warm, not too hot. Now, if you think about it this way, this is really a daikon cake. It's not a rice cake. You only need enough rice slurry to help hold that daikon together into a cake. So the mixture should be mostly daikon, which is what I'm looking at here as well. The daikon um, is the star of the show. The rice flour is the helper. You don't want to have a rice heavy daikon, uh, daikon cake. All right, let's get it well mixed here and let's take a look at it. So this is what we're left with. A very, um, very stringy from the daikon, a lot of shreds. I like the amount of green onions that are in there. And when that cooks together, that's gonna look really nice. So I think that's pretty good. Mostly daikon helped by the rice flour. And let me, let me get my pan ready and then I will also get my steamer ready. All right, for our pan, what you want is you wanna have, um, I like to use a square pan. I like it square because we're gonna cut it into squares a little bit later. So a little bit of oil in my pan to help the rice, uh, the, the daikon cake not to stick. Just a paper towel to get that wiped all the way in. Make the whole pan as non-stick as possible. All the edges, all the sides, all the corners. This uh, cake does tend to stick in pans, so you wanna make sure you do this quite thoroughly here. Hopefully I've done enough. We'll see in a little bit when the cake comes out. All right, from here, let's go ahead and take our cake and put it in. Let's get that spread out. Now this cake is not gonna rise a lot. Um, it will, th this particular pan and the quantity I've used, um, again, just for this video, is a little bit low. You can actually do a thick layer in here. Um, you could have it be twice as thick if you want, but for this, for this video, I we're just doing it kind of shallow here. I want to get that as evenly as possible so that when I'm cooking it, when I'm steaming it, it's actually going to uh, steam evenly. All right. Without obsessing over it, there we go. Let's get that in the steamer. I'm going to bring the steamer over here so you can see that process as well. This is uh, water down here, and this is where the steamer, let me see if I can show you. So it's already actually quite steamy on the inside. And this part here uh, is what holds the actual item. You can see it's got plenty of holes in there for the steam to come right through. So we'll go ahead and get this ready, and we'll put our cake right into here, and we're gonna let that steam 
for 20 minutes on a high heat. And after 20 minutes, we're gonna turn the fire off and just let it sit for about 10 minutes. And when it's done, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so our turnip cake has now been uh, in the steamer for about 25 minutes. Let me turn the heat down and let's go ahead and open this up and see what that looks like. Careful not to let the steam or the, the water drip into the product. So let's, let's have a look here. It's pretty hot, but this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my cake tester. And what I'm checking for is, is there any uh, rice powder or uh, the rice stuck in here? It actually smells amazing. So let's go ahead and slide that in. And if it comes out clean, we are ready to go. So that has come out pretty much mostly clean. It could be a little bit longer. Um, the nice thing about steaming is you're really not gonna over steam um, many of your foods, which uh, steaming is pretty nice. It's a very controlled way of cooking gradually. So here we go. Here's our steamed cake. Um, right away, let me just make some comments on it. So I still see a pretty bumpy surface. What that's telling me is I actually didn't add enough of the rice flour or enough of the water because I would want to see this be a pretty smooth, even glossy surface, and I'm not seeing that. So let's look at the bottom and see how that looks. Let me go ahead and pull this out. I'm sure the flavor will be fine, um, but again, for the, for the cake, I would have wanted it to be a little bit shinier with a little bit more of that rice flour in there, I think. Let's see how this comes out. Okay, it's coming up pretty, pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it. And I'll, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try flipping it right out and see if it comes out in one piece. So hope it does, uh, fingers crossed. Let's see how it does here. All right, that looks great. So what we have here is our finished term cake. Now, uh, for those of you that are Chinese or have had this before, you might say, hey, that's a pretty thin turnip cake you made. And you know what, it is. I think I should have made more quantity. Usually it would be about twice as fat, but for demonstration purposes, this will be just fine. And I can't wait to eat this. I'm sure it'll taste pretty good as well. Okay, the next step then, what we wanna do is we actually want to pan fry it. So I'm gonna let that cool, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll recap my steamer. And let's move this over here. And I've got a pan heating up. And let's get this pan. This is a carbon steel pan here. And I just want a medium heat. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this up and we're gonna pan fry it, okay? So a little bit of canola oil. Um, actually, you know what, not too little. I want there to be a nice sizzle. In this case, the oil is gonna form a connection point between the bumpiness of the cake and the flatness of the pan, and that oil is gonna help to sizzle all the way through. Let's go ahead and cut this. I'm gonna do nine pieces. So I'll do two cuts this way, and then two cuts the other direction. All right. And my pan should be hot already because I did have it pre-warming. And let's go ahead and set a few pieces in. Turn the heat down a little bit. I see a little bit of smoke coming off, which tells me my pan is at least 450 degrees. I'll set these in. Oop, didn't cut it all the way through, I apologize. All right, now at this point, your turned cake is ready to eat, but we fry it before we serve it to give it that extra sear and a little bit of that crispiness on the outside. That's the way we, we like to eat it. So let's get that oil moving around. It's got a nice sizzle going on. Um, when you wanna brown, especially this item, you don't want your fire too high. It's actually temperature over time 
that's going to give you that nice Maillard effect on the outside of the, uh, of the turnip cake. If you go too high, it's actually going to burn. Um, and this sizzle amount here is good. I, I, I can tell it actually can take just a little bit more heat. I'm gonna turn that heat up just a little bit to get that brown a little bit faster. Now, traditionally, these cakes are served with a, uh, we call it jiang you gao, which is a, uh, it's a thickened sweet soy sauce. Uh, you can eat it plain. You can put some white pepper on it. You can put it with soy sauce, or if you want, you can actually make a sweet thickened soy sauce. We'll make another video to show you how to make that. All right. I think they're doing pretty good. Let's take a look here. Let's flip one over, see how it's doing. Great, got just a little bit of a, of a sear on there. Same for this. All right. At this point, you can finish off your sear and you'll be ready to plate and enjoy it. So let me go ahead and have you take a look at it uh, right now in the pan. This is the finished product that you're going for. After it's done searing on both sides, you can uh, take it out and plate it. I would love to hear if you make this dish, how it turns out, give it a try, see if your kids enjoy it. And again, this is actually a vegetarian dish, which is great if, you, if that's what uh, the way that you eat or you have friends that are vegetarians. So try this out, let us know what you think. Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.